It's been a long time coming. I've just been busy, guys. It's not that I don't want to make any videos. Help my daughter all of spring and summer, and we're still not finished. We've been helping her with her home, making it really nice. Uh, maybe one day I'll post some pictures. She's going for uh, almost like a farmhouse, shabby chic. It's like a little mix of everything, but it's really cute, and that's what I've been doing. So... Didn't get a chance to make much videos, but since it's that time of the season and I'm able to get away from the from Erica's, I am going to show you one of my favorite things I make over this time. Since fall is just around the corner, we're going to preserve some eggplant and it's very, very easy. Anybody can do this. You could do it with your eyes closed. That's how easy it is. I've already started. I have some labels ready here. I'm going to show you some of the little jars I made. So we're going to call this eggplant and 2024. I also was able to make some sauce that I preserved, but there are videos with that. So I'm not going to show you what I did, but I do also preserve chunks of tomatoes maybe i can make another little video of that how I, how easy it is and uh, show you how i do that but for now we're going to do the eggplant and i'm going to show you here is my beautiful eggplant that i make it's under oil so that's how well oil and vinegar uh, so that's how it gets preserved but i do seal them and i don't seal them sorry I don't seal them in the oven. I have this cute little gadget that helps me seal my jars and nice and snug. So there's my eggplant. I usually put them in little jars because if I put them in big jars, my husband will eat the whole big jar. So this way he takes a little jar if he eats just this. I'm okay. I'm not going to complain that he ate all my work in one sitting. So <laughs> there it is. Beautiful eggplant. Now this is not just eggplant, the one that I just batched. I mean, I made a few batches and because I'm busy with Erica's place, I don't make large batches at a time. I do have a whole case waiting for me to make, but uh, this one here is a mix of lion's mane and eggplant that my husband uh the eggplant we bought but the lion's mane he picked it himself and i am so grateful that uh he brought that home for me it's a mix really it's not just lion's mane it's lion's mane and bear tooth which is pretty much the same family very good for us it's good for our mind and uh, the eggplant is just good for our belly now what do you do with eggplant that's been pickled like this pickled and put under oil what you do is if you're making a panini or if you're making sandwiches or if you're having people over uh, you could put this in a little bowl and they could serve themselves and eat it with a little piece of bread especially before making uh, a dinner and you have little finger food out there so you could put that out this way but very very good but I'm not going to just make them like this I'm going to show you how I make some that are larger slices if we ever want to make uh, a lasagna or something we could put some of those in there but there you go delicious eggplant and i'm going to show you how easy it is to make this now as you could tell i also have the skins here because i hate to waste right now the skins i don't usually give this out of some like if my sisters i'm going to give them a jar each i'm not going to give them the skins of course that's for my pleasure. And I'm going to show you. Here are a mix of skins and whatever leftover eggplant I had in the bowl. And that's going to be uh, for me. But they're just as delicious. The difference is this is not as tender. The other one is like butter. This one has a little bite to it, but it's very, very good. And the longer they sit, the more tender they get. And when you make this, you don't eat this right away. You got to wait at least, I'd say about maybe uh, four or five weeks before you could open up a jar and enjoy it. 
and I'll tell you why. Now this one's not sealed because my jar is not full, but that's going to go into the fridge and that's going to be for me. These ones here, I could put them in my garage, which is a non-heated garage. I store all my food there. But if you don't have something that's like a cold room, if you have a cantina, you could put it in there. It doesn't have to go in the fridge. But if you don't have a cold room, I say uh, make a few of them and put them in the fridge. And actually, you can make this any time of the year. You don't have to wait for the fall. Uh, you could buy eggplant any time of the year. It's more the process and the taste rather than having to save money in the fall. Now's a good time if you want to save some money because it's a lot cheaper. Fresh from the farms, that's why I have them. But otherwise, when those are finished, it's so easy to make that you could go to a grocery store. And it doesn't have to be just the big yellow, uh, not yellow, the big purple eggplants. This is the one I've used, but you can use any eggplant you want. You can use Chinese eggplant. Uh, they're just as good, just as delicious. So it's really up to you. So don't get discouraged if you haven't made it to the market. You could always pick up some at your local store and make yourself a couple of jars and then seal them. If you don't have one of these, that's okay too. You could just make sure that you top your jar with oil. That means don't fill your jar up all the way to the top. Leave about an inch and then make sure that it's topped with oil. But you're going to see later on in this video because I'm going to, it's going to take at least two days. This process takes two days. Well, one day really because the second day you jar them. You don't have to have one of these things if you don't want to. It's nice to be able to seal your jars, but you can use any jar you have at home that has a lid and, and it doesn't have to be a mason jar type lid it could be any jar even an old jam jar just make sure that you fill up the oil over the eggplant and that's how that gets preserved i've done chicken of the woods mushrooms that i found in the forest i also do it that way and trust me you can have them for years as long as it's under the oil and put in a cold or cool place you have no problem with it. So let me show you how easy it is to do this. Now these are all washed. I washed them when I got them. So all I have to do is cut them up. Okay. And we start off. Okay, let me put that paper away before. Here we go. I start taking off the skin. And because I'm not picky about the shape of the skin, because you're not going to see this when it's in your sandwich. And it's just nice. You know, if you have people coming over, you take out some olives. That's how my parents used to do it. Today, people take out a bag of chips if somebody's coming over. But when my mom was young and had her family come over, her sisters and their husbands and their kids, uh, she would open up some lupinis, and most of the time they also made their own lupini. But today you could buy that in a jar. So look at this, my first video back, and I'm doing a story tell video. <laughs> I hope you guys don't mind me talking. Okay, so my mom, when she had family coming over, she would open up some lupini, she would open up olives, black, green, all kinds of olives. She would season some olives, especially if they're the ones that are dehydrated and shriveled up. That I, I think you've seen me do that. Uh, she used to season it with a little bit of olive oil, some lemon juice or lime juice. She used to do some parsley. She used to do some crushed garlic, orange skins. And yeah, not the lemon juice, sorry, orange juice from the orange. She would toss that up and she would make that a day ahead, which really didn't take long to do. And she would serve it when family would come over. And they'd sit around the table, either playing cards, the adults of course, while all us cousins would be running around the house that's what was served 
Okay, so once it's peeled, you're gonna cut slices. Now, you're not gonna cut them too skinny and you're not gonna cut them too thick. That is the size that I usually cut it. If you cut it too skinny or too thin, I guess I'm gonna throw it on the side. Then what happens is when you squeeze the water out of it, you end up breaking your eggplant. So you don't want to make it too thin, okay? And you put them on your bowl, and then you're gonna sprinkle some salt on there. So yeah, when people came over, they would take out stuff that they preserved. They would cut a nice loaf of bread, Italian bread, sometimes bread she made, or maybe a nice fogaccia that she made. And that's what she would serve when people come to the house. Not like today where people put a bag of chips on the table. Life was different back then. And today of all days is my mom's birthday. So I'm glad I'm making this because this is something she would make. And this is a nice reminder on her birthday that I'm making something that she used to make. Okay. Yeah, September the 11th, my mama's birthday. So far you see how easy it is. This is more storytelling than it is making a cooking video. It's not really cooking, but yeah. I can take this out if you make some of vegan cheese you could put some of that on the table and you don't have to wait for friends and family to come over you can serve it to your family I'm sure they will enjoy it and it doesn't have to go in bread and you could drain them if you don't want to have so much fat in your diet you can also put them on paper towels and take some of the oil off now what kind of oil do I use to preserve this um, if you put olive oil, what happens is it becomes very gelatinous in the refrigerator. Not so much if it's in the garage where I keep it, but it does get a little gelatinous. So what I do use is sunflower oil, a mix actually of sunflower oil and olive oil that's made out of the stones of the olive. So it does not get jelly like when you put it in a cold refrigerator. Okay. So you're just gonna wait a few minutes or if you don't have, you don't wanna wait that long, you can start just squeezing it. The salt, doesn't take long to water these down, like take the water out of it. And what you're going to see, even though your eggplant is white, you're going to see it makes a very brown water, and that's a very bitter water. And I'm not sure if you can see it. Do you see the water? It's very brown. Because... I have a lot more eggplant here than I showed you. And the good thing is, is as it goes down, so you can make big batches. You see how the bottom part is already like watered down. And what you wanna do is get all that water out of the eggplant. And it really, like I said, does not take long to do this. So if you have a lot that you want to make, because they're great as gifts too, guys, especially if you seal them. Now, I'll show you the little gadget that I bought here. Maybe one day I'm going to buy an extra one and we'll do another giveaway. I haven't done any giveaways. I haven't done anything because I've just been too busy. I've been in the construction business. <laughs> but I'll show you the one I picked up, and they're really not that expensive. This is the one I have. I'm not sure if that's the name. It's X3. I bought this on Amazon. 
So maybe we'll turn this as a giveaway, guys. What do you say? Eh? I think I'm going to, uh, whoever wins, I'm going to have Amazon deliver it to them. Okay, we're going to try and see if we can make a giveaway out of this. So just a little thank you for having the patience to come back or hanging in there waiting for me to make a video. But um, yeah, and uh, I'd say maybe uh, a week's time, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, pull a name with a YouTube random picker. And whoever wins this, I will make a little video when I'm picking the name. This way you get to see that I'm doing it live. Well, not live, but you're going to see me doing it as you watch the video. Give me a chance to put this up so uh, I'll have the dates for you when it starts and when it ends. And the more time you comment under the video or share a video, uh, let us know where you shared it and your name will generate more and more. So if you uh, comment more than once, you have more of a chance to win it. It's not a very very expensive item. I think it's about $40, $45, but I will make a giveaway out of this video and I'll have Amazon deliver it to whoever wins. I'll put the dates right on the video so you're gonna see writing on the video when the, uh, the giveaway starts and when it ends and then as soon as it ends, I will make a video where I picked a name and one of you is gonna get a chance to win this fantastic tool and I'll show you not only do you do the wide mouth but here we go you put this and now you have the smaller mouth jar like for this one here and let me see I hope I didn't get any oil on the lid oh I did on this one but I'll show you what I would normally do what I normally do is after I jar it at first I use like a funnel so I don't get any oil anywhere near the the mouth of the lid and I did manage to get oil on this one so you have to just be patient with me okay and we're gonna top it up with some oil you just want to make sure that everything is submerged. Okay. Make sure that my lid is very, very clean because otherwise it won't make a seal. And then we put our lid on. Hopefully I got all the oil off. And we have our small mouthpiece on it. And we push it in, press the middle. I usually like to give it a little extra and then you wait for it to do a thing it's gonna go down to zero and that's how easy it is to seal these I've done this also with when I jar my lentil when I jar my rice I usually put a dry sack in my jar and then I suck the life out of the jar and I store it in my pantry Hopefully, I got all the oil off. When you do jar them and you have one of these gadgets, you want to make sure you don't get any oil and whatsoever around the, the lip. Otherwise, you're never going to get a good seal. So the moment of truth here. Okay, let's see what happens. And there it is. Look at that. That's just a flat lid and I'm able to lift it up. There you go. My jar is sealed. And usually when I seal my jars, I don't put the ring around it. I leave it like this. Otherwise, if you put the ring around, it could be a false seal. It might look like it's sealed, but it's not. This is how I do it. See? Nice and snug. So... We're going to turn this video, my first video, back as a giveaway, guys. So it might not be this brand, whatever brand they have, but one of you is going to get a chance to win that. So look at all the water it's made. I'm not sure if you can see it. And you see that brown water? That's very bitter. And because you take that water out, this is going to be fantastic. 
Okay, once this water, let me go dump this because there's going to be still a lot of water that comes out of this. Be back. I'm sure I'm going to spill some water. Oh, dry it up. Okay, here we go. Oh, I did, you see? Okay. So now you have a sift. And all you do is squeeze the water out. This is the easy part. Well, they're all easy parts. And you just want to get all that water out. So just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You could also hold it in your hand and just squeeze it. It looks like you squeezed a lot of water out, but there's still water in here. And if you see your eggplant is starting to look a little different in color, do not be afraid because you see how beautiful and white they are in those jars. The vinegar is going to do that for you. See? Look at that. So just keep squeezing. And if you have to, just to give it a boost, add a little extra salt. All of that is just going to go away. It won't even be there. And that's it. Go do a bed. Come back. Squeeze a little more. And this really doesn't take long to... You have a very dry mess. You want this to have almost no liquid left in there. So as long as you can squeeze water out, you squeeze it. Now, I could have put some lion's mane in here, but this one will be without. I mean, I could still do it. Actually, I have some chanterelles that I'm drying. And I can use that. Uh, also, if you don't want to do this and you want to make uh, eggplant lasagna, uh, you want to get the water out too because it really makes a more delicious lasagna. It's not bitter and it's nice and sweet. Look at that. You think you're damaging them. That's why I say don't make them too thin because the thin ones tend to be a little more flimsy. But at least when you get a nice piece of eggplant. Now you can rinse this, but if you rinse them, that means you're going to be squeezing again. I wouldn't rinse them because most of the salt will go right out of this. Now I also have, I'll show you, let me just go dump this. See all the water that came out? And here we go. Now, like I said, I made some earlier. So I still have my vinegar water, which I can still use. Look, it's still a little brown. Taste it. Mmm. Still very vinegary. And usually the vinegar water, I would do one part vinegar to one part water when you do it. A little bit of salt because you're going to, all the salt comes out of this. And, uh, yeah. See it? As long as you could pull out that water, you keep squeezing. I'm not sure if you could see it. Look at that. Do you see the water? And you can see it squeezing right out of my, my hands. Now, if you rinse this, you get all the seeds out. But I don't care if there's seeds in my jar and you're probably saying why such a long video for something so simple well not only do i give you a little bit of story backstory of when my when i was younger and what my parent my mom would do see 
I could still probably squeeze a little more. So I'm going to continue doing this. And then we're going to take all this stuff that we squeezed out, all the eggplant that we squeezed out, and we're going to dump it in there. See? And then we dump it in there. And that is going to pick up, it's almost like a sponge. It's going to pick up all that vinegar. And it's going to rehydrate itself again. And then it goes in there, into my vinegar water. It's all coming back to life. And also, if you ever go to my other channel, The Woods Beyond, we made a couple of videos there, and I'll tell you why. Because we found this cat that came out of the forest. Beautiful black cat with the most beautiful yellow eyes. She comes out of the forest, and we used to see her when we used to go up north. We haven't been doing that either. Uh, we used to see her catch bugs to eat the poor thing. She was so thin that when we put the food out, when she, we finally saw her in the yard and we were up, we decided to put uh, food for her so she could have something to eat. And when Erica was putting the food on the balcony at the cabin, she jumped up and she went right up to Erica. And that was the oddest thing. So Erica picked up her and the food and she came into the cabin and she was so, my God, I don't think she weighed a pound. No, I don't even think she weighed a pound. So tiny, so skinny, her stomach was almost sunken in. And she smelled like usnea. If anybody knows what usnea is, I make medicine with that. It's old man's beard that you find on trees in the forest. That's what she smelled of. So she was sleeping out there. But we managed to get her in the house. I don't know how we did that. She just basically walked in. And we quickly put her up on Facebook to see if anybody knew her. Uh, we put him all over where Erica is up north in the groups that she's in. And nobody claimed her. So we went and we bought a harness for her we bought some good food for her and a toy and we called also the SBCA if anybody's looking for this cat we sent them pictures and nobody claimed her so she became Erica's cat as soon as she got into the city which was a week later she called look at that uh, she called the vet and she said, we found the cat in the forest. She says, we're going to bring her back in the city. We have her up on the SPCA group and also um, the group that she is where she lives, uh, where she has her cabin. And she says, but I would like to have her checked. Do you mind if we bring her? And she came home with her face, like almost dropped down to her chest. I said, what's wrong? She goes, guess what? Nia, we call her Usnia, so Nia for short. She says, guess what? Nia's pregnant. I says, how's she pregnant? She's a kitten. She was so small. She goes, ma, they said they heard at least four heartbeats. Well, guess what? Nia had seven kittens. She's an eating machine. The kittens are nice and big now. The kittens are... Um, I'd say she, they're going, they're eight weeks. So they're nice and big. They're destroying her <laughs> newly fixed house. <laughs> they're plucking everything. She's got all her curtains tied up. Oh my God. But they're so adorable. Of course, I'm going to take some and I'll introduce you to the ones I'm taking. I'm taking Little Bear and I'm taking Samson. Why do we call him Samson? He was the smallest one of all and he is just so full of life. Anyhow, we... Uh, we found homes for them, for the kittens. So they're going to be leaving soon, which is going to be another sad day. I don't even want to be there the day that 
And I know Erica's going to have me there because she's already crying over getting rid of these kittens. But there's like no way she could keep all those cats in her house. But yeah, it's been a very long spring and summer. And now we're going into fall. But let me tell you, I didn't even see the summer this year. This year, my summer was in a house, either eating uh, dust from sanding wood or plaster. That's what I've been eating. My, lung, my lungs is full of that stuff, dear God. But yeah, we are excited to introduce you to those kittens. So I might make a little video just to show you before they all go. They're just adorable. But, or show you at least pictures of them. You could go see, there's a couple of videos on my The Woods Beyond if you want to go see. Uh, I didn't put it where, I didn't put up the video where she gave birth, but uh, what a trooper of a mother. I can't believe that little kitten was such a brave cat. Didn't cry once. I think maybe once she let out a little yelp and that was it. But what a good mother she is. But anyhow, so much for that story. <laughs> I'm just dragging these stories back and forth. But yes, this is going to be a giveaway uh, video. I'm showing you how I make my eggplant. It's one of the easiest things you could do. Uh, there's no cooking involved. The only cooking is the salt and the vinegar, really. And um, we preserve it in oil. So very easy. Now I'm going to take this, push that over. And I'm going to take this dirty water. And I'm going to dump all the skins in there. You could cut them small or you could leave them big. It's really up to you. Uh, this is my own reserve, so I'm not worried. And I'm going to squeeze this out. And then I'm going to have a little jar where I keep those in. Now, once it's in the vinegar, you will not touch it again. So I will put a bag over the top here. This one I still have to squeeze, but here you are. You won't touch this till tomorrow. This is going to sit in there till tomorrow. So I am going to just cover it and push it aside and don't touch it. Come tomorrow. I'm going to squeeze the life out of them and I'll show you what I do there. But for now, we're going to salt these and we're going to squeeze water out of there and it doesn't matter really how much salt you put the only thing is if you don't want to waste salt you use less but you want to make sure that the salt pulls out the water so you just maneuver it around you're gonna see it starts getting wilted and we do the same thing all over again these feel tougher for you but let me tell you once they've been sitting in the vinegar day and you can see when it starts working see the difference that color green and this white you know that you're getting all the water out you need the salt to break it down and make it nice and soft so that's my little reserve i'm going to enjoy those for sure in a panini Good morning, everyone. All right, we're gonna do our second part of this video. Very simple. Everything I do is simple, really. It's not complicated. Okay, here is our eggplant that we've had marinating in the water and vinegar and a little salt. And it's been marinated all night long, all day yesterday and all night long. We will need a bowl to toss the eggplants in and we're gonna need something to hold the water okay make sure your hands are nice and clean so we're gonna just put it this way okay we're gonna start off with adding some ingredients into this so we're gonna start off with a little bit of olive oil we're gonna need some chili flakes because we're making this a little spicy A little bit of salt remember it's something that you're not gonna sit there and eat the whole jar mind you if it's my husband he would but 
you're going to put a bit of this in your sandwich. So if it's a little salty, it's not the end of the world. I eyeballed it, but you could put as much salt as you want. Okay. Make sure your herbs are washed. I have parsley here that I've already pre-washed. Now, you don't have to put just parsley. Whatever herb you like, but if you want to have that taste, the authentic taste, you could put parsley. But I've also made it with lemon thyme, and it's delicious. I put not just the leaves, I put also the stems. But if you really want to do it the proper way, you use just the leaves. But I don't like to waste, so I use everything. The stems come out just as delicious. There we go. And it goes. Beautiful. Now we're going to get some garlic. Okay, let's do it this way. I don't want to over squish it because I want to slice it in there. But you can use, uh, instead of putting like larger chunks of garlic, you could also crush it. I'm going to show you how my mom used to make it. Okay. Side. Now, I also put a little bit of maple. I'm sorry, my camera's in a slight angle. I should open the light. Okay, we're going to put just a little bit of maple. Now, ingredients, it's how much you want to put. There is really no set rules over here. If you like extra garlic, you put extra garlic. If you want less herbs, you put less herbs. Uh, but these are the flavors that are going to make your eggplant. Okay. Wash my hands. Okay, and we start, we grab it, and we start squeezing. You want to get all the vinegar out. Wear an apron because you might squirt it right onto yourself. Into the bowl it goes. Very simple to make this. Now, if you have a whole day to do this, I say go for it. Do all of the eggplants you have. But it also depends on how much space you have. I'm fortunate to have that garage where I could keep it there all winter long. Because I don't heat it. This is, I think it was four large eggplants. And the size of jar you preserve them in is really up to you. I use little ones. This way when you open, you only open one. And then when it's finished, you open another one rather than keeping a jar in your refrigerator that's open and everybody's gone in there with their forks and i rather open a small one. When it's done, we open another one. And remember, if you don't have fancy fancy jars, that's okay. You can use whatever jar you have. Just make sure that the oil covers all the eggplant in. 
and make sure there's no air bubbles. What I usually do, well, you'll see, I put a little bit of oil in the jar first, and then I add my eggplant and top if needed. And if you want to make another batch with this vinegar, I say add a little extra vinegar, and you can still use it because it's still, the vinegar is still there. This is a second batch I made with this vinegar. Usually people throw it out and start new. I don't. I use the same vinegar and I work at this until I have no more eggplants left to do. But if I have way too many eggplants, then I will change the vinegar water and start a new batch of that. Got this vinegar. I'm going to taste it after. It should still be good for another batch. Now you wonder why don't you just cut the eggplant and put it straight into the vinegar because you want to get rid of all the water out of the eggplant with the salt and then the eggplant absorbs all the water again, the vinegar water, and that's how you pickle them. Okay, that wasn't so bad. There's a lot of seeds in here. I might make a new batch of water for my other eggplants. There we go. Put this aside. Okay. Now, this one, I'm making big ones because I have, I want to give one to my daughter and my husband wants to give one to his friend. So I've got two large ones. And these smaller ones that I usually do for myself. So we will bring this back here and we're going to toss this in. Add more oil as needed. But usually I add the oil in the jar. There's our seasoned eggplant and this is like so good especially in a sandwich. Okay so I'm just gonna taste for salt and for sweetness. You don't have to put the maple, but I put maple in everything. I just love how it tastes. That little sweetness just does it. Okay. Perfecto. Okay, so my jars are already sterilized and done. Let me just get... Yeah, so one of you are going to get a chance to win. So this is the oil. It is a mix of sunflower and then I add pumice olive oil. It's not pure olive oil because then the problem with that is it'll make like that jelly. The olive oil gets like jelly-like and then just looks messy. you got to wait till it kind of breaks down again to serve it because it's just a jelly mess but uh, i use pumice oil and sunflower oil and it's the best that's for me it's the best when i'm preserving and then important that you use one of these that you don't dirty your lid and you put it in because i put the olive oil, uh, the oil in the jar first a little bit not a lot and make sure your hands are clean, guys. There will be no air bubbles. But you just push down. Make sure that you don't get any air bubbles in between. Okay. 
Okay. Push this aside. Push in as much as you can. I can still put a bit more in there. I have to be careful not to get my lid dirty, but if you do get your lid dirty, this is what you're gonna do. First, we're gonna top this up with just a little bit of oil. If you do get your lid dirty, paper towel, and I have a bottle of alcohol and I clean the rim so I could get a nice seal. There we go. Tap that. And I'm going to use the machine that we're going to do a giveaway. Remove the attachment because this one has the small jars and the big jars. In it goes. Turn it on. I increase it a bit so it gives me a good seal. And this I'm going to use for the small mount. And that's how easy it is. Now, like I said, you don't need this if you don't have this. Uh, as long as you don't fill your jar all the way up to the top with eggplant and then the rest just add oil up to there make sure it's covered you will charge it and while we're doing this that's gonna charge okay let's put our Doesn't take much to fill up a big jar, guys. Okay. Look at that. Almost four eggplants went in this one. Push it in. Get all those air bubbles out. Add extra oil. There we go. And we want to clean the lid. This works while it's charging. Let's see if it works while it's charging. We'll see. Oh, it does. Look at that. to charge it last night but there you go there's my jar nice and sealed fantastic fantastic so this will be a gift for someone either my husband's friend or my daughter whoever comes first and um, I have just enough to make a small jar actually I have this jar just to show you uh, you can use re recycled jars that you have and I had put some in there yesterday, but my husband did not wait. He decided he was going to eat it. So now I'm left with the jar and the oil. And we're just going to put the rest of this in there. 
There we go. That was quick. And I'm not worried if I don't get everything out of my bowl because I still have the skins that I will be seasoning. Go. Make sure that lid is clean. Top it up with oil. So if you don't have the fancy jars, you can still do it. Just make sure there's nothing around the top of the lid here and everything is submerged under oil. Don't put the oil too far up. You want to cover your eggplant, but you don't want it too far up because then you're going to get it on the lid and you can cause some bacteria. But there you go. I kept the skin nice and long, but you don't have to. You can make them smaller if you want. You can even take your eggplant and chop it up along with carrots, some celery. It is so good that way also. So if you want to see me make those, I could show you. Okay, taste. Mm. I know what I forgot. A little bit of chili flakes. Sorry, you don't even see what I'm doing here, eh? Okay. A little bit of olive oil. And we're going to put all of this in. All the dressing, guys. Where's my alcohol? Make sure those lids are perfectly clean. Perfect. We're going to seal that up. So there you go, guys. Very simple. And you can make yourself and your family some beautiful, beautiful eggplant that you can store away all winter long and pull it out when you have friends coming over and it is simply delicious so if you want to be part of this giveaway don't forget to comment under the video if you share it either on facebook or instagram come back leave me the link where you shared it with another comment and your name goes in twice and then um, we're going to let it run a week so everybody has a chance to participate. It's been a while since I've been on YouTube, so I might not get a lot of people coming to see this video, but I hope that I do. And this way, a lot of you get a chance. Jeez, this really made some suction here. Okay, look at that. Here's another jar done. And this way, uh, not only uh, you guys get to try out my recipe but you get a chance to participate and get a, a chance to win this beautiful little gadget that you can use in your kitchen to seal your jars and like i said it's not only this that i seal i seal jars of rice i seal jars of beans and it just makes your food last longer in your pantry so i'm gonna say Thank you for coming by. It's been a while. I'm excited to see you guys. And don't forget, leave me a comment. Let me know how you guys are doing. I'm going to try and put up some cute pictures of our kitties that were born. And I'm going to say good luck to all of you. And I love you. And I'll see you in my next video, guys. <music>